Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Card is signing Black in again, asking you to hit the share button and benefit us while the uh, like and the subscribe buttons benefit me only. So the message is more important than the messenger. So please share first. Listen, uh, this is about T.I. And I wanted to get a chance to listen to uh, the conversation in which he said that he took his daughter to the annual, uh, annually to the gynecologist to make sure the hymen is still there. Somebody made a comment about uh, him being happy that his younger son, younger than Deja, uh, was no longer a virgin. And this is the only thing that I will accept from feminists as a valid point. Except for one thing. What people have shown is this. Studies have shown that women who are feminists don't necessarily have a different taste in men than women that are not feminist. Now, men generally ain't into feminism. And usually the, the men that the women like the most are the ones that are the least into feminism. So what does this tell you? This tells you that the women who are feminists and the women who are not tend to want the same guy anyway. And these guys ain't feminists. They may believe in taking care of women, looking after them. They may believe in a benign patriarchy, but they ain't feminist. So they may not believe in a double standard, but they're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking against it either. They're just not going to practice it. And they're only going to address it if something brings their attention to it, as far as I can make out. But the men with the most options, no, they're not feminist. And that's the funny thing about it. That's the irony of it. And some women would say, well, men shouldn't be feminist just because it increases their chances with women. That's still objectification. So goddamn what? Men are financial objects. So why shouldn't women be sexual objects? Now, I'm all for this in the context of a marriage. OK, fine. Financially objectify the man. But do what the hell he tells you because he's taking responsibility and paying the cost to be the boss. You're the sexual object. Either one of your private start itch and the other one's responsible. Which is much nicer than what an actual chauvinist would say, because a chauvinist would say, I'll pay the bills. You don't get out there and work. You don't even shake hands with other men. You don't look at other men. You don't have business contacts and conversations with other men. And by the way, I don't care about your sexual needs. You just bend over when my dick gets hard. To hell with your orgasm. A chauvinist might say that. I don't. I'm taking a Muslim route, which is that each one is responsible for the other one's sexual needs. The man is responsible for the finances, and the woman still has a right to earn and save money and doesn't have to spend it on the family. However, the man is still the boss because he must pay the cost. So what I'm saying is very fair compared to what an actual chauvinist would say. Because I don't hate women, and I don't want to see them necessarily oppressed. I don't want to see them oppressed even unnecessarily. Any kind of qualifier you might put in front of the word oppressed, I don't want to see. But I also understand that a feminist can't tell the difference between uh, what's good for women and what's oppression. And you know who else can't tell the difference between that? Children. And that's the irony of it. What I'm hearing is men say, well, women are like children. You got to control them. You can't just let them do what they want to do. <laughs> and I don't like to sit up here and say stuff like this about grown women. I don't want to think that way. But the irony of it is that when I'm dealing with Western women, that is the most accurate thing I've ever heard. Which is why I can't marry a Western woman. You see, I'm not a pedophile. I'm the opposite of a pedophile. I prefer women my age, sometimes older. Now they could be a bit younger, but I do prefer women that act like adults. When they start showing childlike tendencies, boy, that is one of the major things that'll kill my libido. And I barely have one left because of what I've been through due to Western black women. What I've seen white women do to other men and what my sisters have done to other men and to me. So I'm very easily turned off at this point. And when I see them act like this, you can imagine what that does. That will ruin it. You could have the most uh, surgical, <laughs> the most surgically enhanced, perfect backside. And more than double D cups. You start acting like a kid. I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, you know what? Never mind. We'll, we'll do this another time when you can act like an adult. You act like a kid too many times. I can't even do it then. And I'm not the only one like that. I'm the one that's dumb enough to sit here and tell you about this on my channel, partially because I don't put my name and face out there to protect not just my own privacy and my job, but also my family's. So I can afford to say that. Other men can't necessarily afford to say that because it sounds stupid. But when you stop and think about it, it sounds very logical. <sighs> And the thing that the real issue with T.I. doing this is only that double standard. Nothing other than that. But even that double standard, I cannot blame only on the men. 
Because what is the real reason that we would have a double standard like this for our sons and our daughters? It's simple. Donovan Sharp pointed this out. Morally speaking, a double standard is a double standard. But practically speaking, women simply can't uh, enjoy a man that doesn't have much experience. Not as much as they enjoy a man who has plenty of experience. And when you take women that sleep around, oh my God, look who they're actually willing to be with in a marriage or in a relationship. Look who they're actually willing to be with in a respectful manner. That is not. So in one hand, it's a good thing that he doesn't let Deja run wild. Taking her to the gynecologist to check a hymen, I find medical issues with that. But if the actual medical professionals found a health issue with checking it, then they would have said something. And they did the right thing by telling T.I. at the time that certain things could break the hymen. He said, she's not an athlete. Just tell me if she has a hymen or not. I get it. And she's under his care, under his roof. She plays by his rules. But then so does his son. And the rules do have to be fair and consistent for the kids. The real issue here is that we miss the solution. And the solution is to look at the way God made human beings and then look at the way we set up the culture and understand that God is right. And if we are in conflict with what he made, we're the ones that are wrong. So if God made it to where people can become fertile at a young age and suffer health problems due to celibacy at a young age and abstinence, and they can, then that means that the best thing to do is for people to start marrying young, but we're not ready for that yet. But that has something to do with socialization. Now, I'm not one of these who says, if she can bleed, she can breed. I'm not one of those who says that, but I am going to say that if the guy can bust the nut, he can marry the butt. Why is that? Because men are actually more mature than women. That's the real reason. And the real, uh, the real ideal scenario will be that you got guys by 15 or 16 Marrying either someone their age or a bit older. I'd specify, I'd probably, re uh, I would say a bit older. The only issue with that is that usually the women uh, would have as much or more than the guy. And that's why, that's where they develop the problem. It's not something that the men have the issue with. Men are not born naturally running away from women who have more than them. That's not what's going on here. It is women that some have something wiring in them saying the man has to have more and do more and be more than me. And so that's why you got a lot of these guys that are um, that now when they get older, when they get to be fully independent adults and they look at how women act in the market, they start saying, well, if a woman that's wealthier than me does come my way, I'm going to go the opposite direction. It's not because I hate her and I or I hate her skill or I hate her having money It's because she's going to hate the fact that I have less than her. Even if she's in the top 0.1%, she's still going to hate it. And if she becomes the most desirable human being on the planet, that means that there's no man that's more desirable than her, that I have to be God for her to want me. And why should a God be with a human being anyway? So, this all goes... It's to the point where when you examine it, you wind up all over the place like I just did, just now. The real issue here, the real issue is that, Asalaamu Alaikum, the real issue is that a lot of you have a problem only because he's not letting his daughter run wild. That's really what it boils down to. Now, I'm not really for the trips to the gynecologist only because that's not going to prove virginity. I got my own reasons. And also because, in his case, uh, he did lose the right to even care about it when he was happy that his son was no longer a virgin. But see, the thing is, the reason for that isn't him. The reason for that is you ladies. Asalaamu Alaikum, what's up? The real reason is that. You ladies are the ones uh, that really uphold the double standard. Because no matter what you say, you choose the same few men all of the time. There are exceptions, but the rule is overwhelming, and the rule is that you all want the same few guys. And that's what you're looking for, and you're not going to stop till you get those same few guys. You ain't interested in nothing else. You ain't interested in men that have not run around with a bunch of different women. You're not interested in men uh, that have maybe only had one sexual partner, unless you've had none. So this is, you know, it's up to you. Despite the fact that men got to do more and be more and have more to get the draws in the first place, you do not give a rat's behind. And so consequently, yeah, I disagree with him for different reasons from you, but even my reason is based largely on your behavior. If his son loses his virginity at age 13, 
his son now all of a sudden, if even if his son later becomes religious like me and decides he just wants to go to marriage route, he has a higher chance. How do I know? Because when I became Muslim, I had sexual experience. I mean, let me just put it to you like this. When I became Muslim, um, I was I was already past five. Despite how much sisters didn't uh, wouldn't treat me equally to other men, I was still already past five. I'm not proud of most of them, but I was past five. And I had a higher chance of being married than a guy who was the same age as me, but about as successful and had been practicing Islam from before puberty and therefore didn't have these experiences. I had a woman tell me that she wouldn't, she was a Muslim. I had her tell me she wouldn't want no virgin man. Now she wasn't a virgin. She'd been married before. But do you now understand? She wasn't a virgin. She'd been married before. She didn't want a man that was a virgin. And I told her, well, you know, most women don't. Even a lot of virgin women don't. She said, oh, that's not true. We're not like guys. I was like, yeah, I know. Y'all aren't. Men don't have a problem with a woman being a virgin. Women have a problem with a man being a virgin. Because I knew, un, I knew non-Muslim women who tend to be more honest about what they want sometimes. And they had said, even if I was a virgin, I didn't want him to be. It's just yucky or disgusting or gross or it's pathetic or something like that. You see, one of the reasons for polygyny, believe it or not, isn't because of what men want. It's because of what women want. I live in a society where polygyny is legal up to four at one time. Do you know what happens? Most men don't do it. And most women still wind up by themselves. And they get to, when they're young, they can't stand the thought of a man having another wife. When they get older, they can tolerate the idea of him having another wife. That means they don't mind being a second wife because they'd rather be the second wife than no wife at all. But these men already have younger women. And since these men already are married to younger women, then she can't, she doesn't have the option at that point because she's older. <laughs> He's already married to somebody in her 20s. See, between 25 and 30, that's the wall here too. And when these women get up into that age, they can't find anybody because the guys they want to marry. And even if they if this they get to, to a point where they're ready to marry a man, they're ready to marry a good man, even if he doesn't have a lot of money and doesn't have he can't pay the high dowry. But see, that's where I do have to blame the men, because that's where the fathers and the brothers step in and say, no, family honor. And even then, I can only blame the men in this culture. So if you're going to get on T.I., get on him about the, the double standard. And that's only if you don't entertain the double standard yourself. And most of you women know because your actions will have proven and your selection of men will have proven that you favored the double standard, even if you said you didn't. If his daughter was running wild, you'd blame him anyway. That's the truth of the matter. And the real issue you have, a lot of you, is that he's not letting his daughter run wild because you know you want to run wild or you wanted to run wild at that age and you only wanted to do it with the worst possible guys in school. If you just be honest about it, we'll get a lot further. I hope what I said has been a, is a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.